pay there and start to give me some cracking myself up here. I, I've take I've done this like five times now. So hey there, start to Kamisa. Um welcome back to our video series. If you're new to our channel, uh please subscribe to us, turn on your notifications. Uh, sometimes best viewed with a glass of wine. Just kidding on that. Um, today I want to just show you a couple pre-post photos of a rotator cuff um, uh, just using shockwave. And we have one case that we did a post a stem cell with as well. But I'm going to show you four cases of just some pre-post images of rotator cuffs and how they've improved and using ultrasound right here for the comparison uh, diagnostic view. And all these cases was a combination of EMTT, focus, and radio. And the only other, and the protocol was um, once a week, we would do all three machines. And then once a week, we would do the, um, just the EMTT only. On the stem cell case, because we had a uh, limited time frame, we doubled up Monday, Thursday, all, all machines two times a week, and you'll see the remarkable change in a four-week time frame. So I'm going to go through those pictures now. You can see here on the image on the left, this is a bone marrow aspiration stem cell case. This patient, we only had a total of six weeks to work with, and we did a fairly comprehensive, aggressive program with him. Um, you see here on the left image, all those uh, thin little circles, those are areas of damage to the supraspinatus. And when you look at the picture on the right, how much more it's filled in. I like to tell patients that if we were to uh, ultrasound a filet, uh, you know, a piece of beef, that it should all look uniform. And you see on the right diagram that the image is a lot more uniform. This was only taken after four weeks, which is a, a we usually do not do this uh, quick of a, of a re-ultrasound, but due to the time constraints, that's all we had, uh, that's all we were able to do. This next image you're going to see here is from the beginning of the year. And you see on the image of the left, on the left hand side where the, one of the arrows are, we see a large white calcification. And this player, this patient was a tennis player. Uh, ultrasound, re-ultrasound was done uh, six weeks, uh, or sorry, eight weeks later. The protocol for this was uh, uh, shockwave, radio, focus, EMTT. Uh, that was done on one day a week. And then the other day during that week, it was just EMTT only. So we did that protocol for six weeks and the ultrasound was done at the eight week mark. This was an interesting case. This patient uh, lived about an hour and a half from us. And you can see here on the left-hand side here, this was a supraspinatus again, which is 95% of the time the most common tear. And this was a younger gentleman in his uh, late 20s, had a couple kids, uh, was not able to work out, was very cautious about picking up the kids. And you can see on the left side here, all those little dots inside the supraspinatus area and those are all calcifications. He really uh, was restricted in most of his activity. The picture and the picture on the right hand side here, uh, you can see how much more the tissue was filled in. He was back to full activity, back to working out. We treated him once a week for eight weeks. The protocol for this was focus unit, radio unit, plus EMTT. Uh, for eight weeks, and then uh, we redid the uh, pre-post ultrasound here. So he was very pleased with his results, um, back to full activity and feeling fantastic. This next case here is uh, another supraspinatus case. You can see on the diagram on the, the image on the left um, that the circle 
and then those uh, the outlined areas. These are all different types of tears in the supraspinatus. And the image on the right, uh, much more, uh, the shape of it is much more characteristic of a healthier uh, of a tendon. We like to say it's a dolphin coming out of the water. This treatment was uh, once a week with radial focus and EMTT. And then another day during that week is EMTT only. So typically when they're coming in twice a week, we'll do a full treatment with all three units of shockwave on one day and then EMTT only. I like to do this like a Monday, Thursday. When you look at those pre-post images, it's pretty remarkable what this technology can do. I mean, we talk about regenerative therapy, re regenerating the tissue, getting that tissue to start to grow again and to heal itself. Who are we to say how much the body can really heal? How fast and how much can it heal? And I like to push the envelope. I like to see how much someone can, can handle because some people can handle a lot and heal really fast and some people need to back it down a little bit. But just looking at those pictures gives you at least some concrete evidence that pre-post uh, shoulder issues can be resolved uh, with shockwave a lot of the time but in other cases, uh, we will need to do, depending on the severity of the tear and the severity of the condition of the shoulder, we will need to add either PRP by itself plus shockwave or stem cell therapy plus shockwave. So um, it's, it just gives us another tool in the bag. And the more that we see this, the more confidence we have of, of improving people's lives. So as we empower you to go do the things you wanna do, if it's from playing pickleball or picking up your grandkids without reservation because your shoulders are feeling better, then so be it. So until next time, have yourself a blessed day.